Welcome back. ACOS, it's been a bit. This fall got a little busier than I anticipated, but the podcast dream is not dead. And I thought, what better way to get it back going than to do an instant reaction morning after podcast covering what happened last night at Doak with the Florida State Seminoles. Victorious over the bad guys, the Florida Gators, 45 to 38. All right, so let's talk about the game a little bit. Um, I, I called my dad yesterday, and I told him it's, it's going to be tight. There was no part of me that thought this was going to be a blowout. I, I, I think we're way past worrying whether or not Florida State gets blown out, but I never at, at any point thought Florida State was going to just beat them bad. I remember going back to last year, and you know we had really turned things around when we went to the Swamp a year ago. But as soon as the game started, you could just see a difference in the line of scrimmage. And I attribute it to recruiting, to SEC versus ACC. I mean, I am not an SEC fan. I will be if Florida State goes there. But they do play good football. And we had started to have success against teams, and then all of a sudden we go up to the Swamp, and there was a definite difference for our defensive and offensive lines as far as dictating the game. And I anticipated the same thing last night. I I did anticipate us to be able to adjust to it, though. Last year, I don't think we ever did, even though we still were in the game late. But I anticipated us last night to be able to adjust to it. And I did get a little naive in the sense that I really thought our defensive line might stand up a little better than our offensive line because of the Fabian Lovitz and the Robert Coopers and the Patrick Paytons and the Jared Versus. I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit worried, especially at halftime, because I did not see an adjustment. I, I felt like Florida was just reaping seven, eight, nine, ten yards any time they wanted to. I feel like they could have run the ball at will in the first half. And that concerned me. If you watched closely, if you watched the line of scrimmage closely, Love it. and Cooper were having trouble getting away from Florida's offensive line. Verse steps seemed just a touch slower than they have the last five weeks. I do not think that was because of Jared Verse. I think there is a definite upgrade in your opponent on the defensive and offensive fronts when you play Florida. And... Luckily for us, we did adjust to it in the second half. And I thought, especially in the third quarter, we looked like a completely different team. And it wasn't just the defensive front in the first half. I felt our linebackers were were slow. And I did not feel like they were making tackles on first impact. I thought they were missing too many first attempt tackles. And I think our linebackers are better than last year. And I think our defensive front is better as a group than last year. So it was concerning to me. Um, but let's go back through the game. And I will tell you, I, I think Florida State's been a really good starting offensive team this year, especially first drive of the game. Uh, last night, I felt like they kind of switched what they'd been good and what they'd been bad at. I felt like we'd been really good early and really bad directly after halftime. We had gotten better with that a little bit lately. But uh, I thought last year, and I was glad to see it, I thought we flipped a little. I, I thought we were really nervous early. And I thought when we came out for the third quarter, it was the best we have re- come back after a halftime in a very long time. You know, we go, we go, we don't get a first, uh, we don't score on that first drive, and we have to punt. Um, you know, and then, but once we got the ball back, we did look like our old self. And here's what I would say. I'm not going to go through every score. Here's what I would, here's what I'll say. I thought we did some things last night in the first half that we have not done in the last four to five weeks. Now, yes, you can say it was because of the opponent. I think it is impossible for the game to not be bigger than uh, than your mentality, even, and that doesn't mean it's too big for you. I think it is 79,000 people against the Florida Gators, your hated rival, when you are 
suddenly favored by, well, I don't know what it ended up being, probably tennis. That's pressure. And it doesn't mean you can't step up and rise up to the pressure because we did. But I do think it takes some time to adjust to that pressure, not just as a player, as a coach. And I did not think some of the play calls, some of the situational calls, some of the offensive or defensive adjustments early resembled what we have done for the for the entirety of the year, even through those three losses. Um, you know, once we scored our first touchdown and, and that, those few plays, we looked like our old self. Benson was just just – I don't know how many he, I think it was a 46-yard run, and then he comes back a few plays later and scores a touchdown. I kind of thought, okay, now we're going to get in our offensive groove, but we didn't. And I I don't know if it's because Florida went right down and scored and so the pressure stayed on us, but I think you can you can take one play call in the first half and say, okay, we were not being who we have been and who has made us successful, and that was the fourth and short where we went for it and didn't punt it. I can promise you, I'm, I believe um, I believe 99 out of 100 times up before last night, we punt that ball because we have been great at pinning teams deep and we, we hold them and we get great field position and then we go score. And us not doing that, I felt like put us in a really bad spot. Yeah, it would have been great to get it, but when you don't get it, the field position game completely changes. And if Florida did go down and score, I mean, we went up seven, and then it was seven to seven, and then they go up 14 to seven, and then we tied at 14 to 14. Where I was most worried was at the end of the second quarter where they had the ball, and I think the horrible commentators, and I'm just going to say that, I thought they were horrendous, especially Osweiler. I thought they were horrendous, but I did agree with them. There was, there was a chance Florida could take this on a two-score swing. They had the ball late, and... If they had scored a touchdown right there instead of the field goal to go up 24 to 21 and then come back and scored another touchdown to start the third quarter, I think we would have been looking at a much different outcome to last night's game. But we did hold them to a field goal. All right. And so I think our kids are our, our, our kids are not kids. They're grown men. I think they went into halftime feeling OK, but not feeling great. And this is where I will say that our coaches deserve the credit that they're getting and I know not everybody loves coach Fuller and I think people are starting to to truly turn around I don't know how you couldn't have turned your train of thought on Norvell but what they did in the third quarter was something they have not done I would say at any point in time this year most third quarters have been our worst quarters. And even in the, the games where our third quarters have not been as bad as others, we still have not played well in the third quarter. We've played really good early and we finished, but our third quarter has been the quarter where we have, we, it's almost like we have taken the quarter off. And last night was a totally different story. And it's because of that third quarter that we won that football game. We, we go down and Fitzy makes the field goal to go 24 to 24. And then for the, for the remainder of that third quarter, we play the kind of football that we have been playing the last, um, for the last month. And, you know, Anthony Richardson really got off. He did not have a good second half. And, you know, I know that they were short. They said five wide receivers. I honestly believe it was just three because they did have two of their starters out there. But he just wasn't the same guy in the second half. And I, I, I think we'd be, we'd be naive to not attribute that to some of the defensive adjustments. One thing I noticed early in the game is we were never, ever lined up. Every time they snapped the ball, we had linebackers still turned around talking to secondary and secondary looking left and right talking to each other. We, we were not lined up and we were not ready. And I thought the second half, we quit trying to be too cute, which that's been my biggest pet peeve of this coaching staff. Um, and again, as an ex much, 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 much lower level head football coach when I was there at the Texas high school ranks, it's something, it's a trap, man. It's a trap you fall into being too cute, thinking you have to do things you don't have to do to win the game. 
And it's so easy, and I've said this so many times, to sit in those rooms and watch the film and think of everything that you can do. Because when you put the, the dry erase marker on the board, everything works. And when, you, when you're at home drawing stuff in your spiral, you, you draw up these, these plays that, that may resemble to some extent what you've done or these defensive adjustments, coverages, mixtures of coverage and blitzes that might resemble in a sense what you've done, but they're not what you've done. And they all work. They all work when you draw them up because whoever has the marker last wins. And go back to last year. That's why I I knew, and I'm not knocking him because he's done a great job at Oregon. I I was not going to miss Dillingham as an offensive coordinator because I still believe he and his wanting to be too cute cost us the second in some of the third games of the year last year. Norvell has done that some earlier in the year, but he's just slowly started to get it out of his system. I think Fuller struggled and and, and fell into that trap a little bit last night because some of the stuff we were doing in the first half was not sound. And you don't have to know a ton about football to know that if you you don't keep contain on a on a very athletic quarterback, he's gonna just light you up. Florida learned that as well, but we we were not having any sort of contain. I expected us to spy with Deloach a lot. Um, I, I think it's pretty crazy how how big he was when he would get up next to Deloach. How big Ar was when he would get up next to him. But we were, we were giving up contain. We were, we were taking our eyes off of him. And again, a lot of times we weren't even lined up before the snap. And I thought in the third quarter that changed. And I think that's what attributed to him throwing. I don't know how many incompletes in a row it was. I think it was at one point 11 to 12 incompletes. Etienne and the other running back, I can't remember his name. I'm not looking at it right now. Still... They were still able to get chunk runs, but those chunk runs had more plays of us uh, stopping them for short gains, no gains, or or negative gains than they did in the first half. Because in the first half, I felt like if they had wanted to, they could have just run the dog out of the ball. Okay, so and I know I'm popping around a lot, but like even go back to Florida's first touchdown, the 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 deep ball to Pearsall. Pearsall was that his name, Ricky Pearsall, where he was wide open. Uh, I would love to go back and and see that from a from a drone view, from an end zone view, from some view that shows us to what happened. Because I can promise you, it was not lack of effort; it was lack of communication, which I attribute to trying to do things that you haven't been successful with the entire year. All right. So when we got that out and we started just being us. I felt like that is when the game turned, and that is when the game turned in the third quarter. And we go out and score two straight touchdowns after the field goal and go up two scores. And even then, to me, and I go back to almost every game this year, two touchdowns is not enough for Florida State, for us as fans after the last few years, to to feel comfortable. Three is. And after we went up 45-31, I think that's what it was. Um, I can't remember. After we went up two scores, 38-24. After we went up 38-24, I I still felt we needed the one more. We needed one more in between us because as long as it's just two scores, you're at risk, and we were at risk at LSU, and it happened, and we've been at risk any other time. If you're up two scores and you you go back into a bit of a slump, which we did towards the last – couple minutes of the third into the fourth quarter you're in danger of it coming down to a final possession game and then Florida to their credit goes on just the longest drive ever at the beginning of the fourth quarter I want to say it was a six minute 53 second drive and I'm telling myself the whole time guys if they score a touchdown hold them to a field goal you're all right they score a touchdown on this drive it is going to come down to the final possession because time has started to to tick I think it was uh because I do believe that drive started at the end of the third I may be wrong but I want to say we got the ball back still up 7 
and it was under six minutes. I know part of our drive right there was at least under six minutes, and we immediately went back to stuff we don't do well. If I remember right, our either first or second down play was um, what I would have called an inverted veer when I coached, but it was when we sent Trey Benson pretty much running full-fledged to the, to the sideline. He gets the ball in front of the quarterback. I don't believe we were reading it. I believe it was an automatic give. So what it basically amounts to is a jet sweep look to your running back outside. I wouldn't even call it outside zone, even though it might be blocked like outside zone. I would have called it uh, an outside sweep. And we're not good at that. We, we are not great when we run side to side. And when we try to run sideline to sideline, And I didn't understand why we we called that play. And again, going back to my experience as a coach, one bad play call can change the game. It did for me many times. And as I have stated, my father was a very successful head football coach. And any time I was the offensive coordinator, play caller, head coach or whatever, and we would lose a close game, he could he could trace it back to one play call. And almost all the, like I'm thinking back in my head, most of those play calls were me after success up in the game trying to do something that is not what we had done well. So I didn't understand that. We are good when our running backs are running north and south. Counters, yes. Side to side, like outside zone sweeps. No, we're we're just not good at it. And I think it showed last, you know, last night. And we got we got stopped. That was either first or second down. So now we're in second and twelve ish, and we couldn't get ourselves out of that situation. All right, and then we, we we give the ball back to Florida, and they go, you know, they they go down and and make it a game. Where I was interested into what Florida State would do was when it was tied up and we're going down and at that point, and I may be a little bit off on which possessions were which, but there was a time we were... We were moving the ball with within the four minute to three minute range, and I started to wonder, are we going to try to take this thing all the way down? Because Florida had had to waste two timeouts early in the second half. It was on the drive in which Jordan Travis on the left side makes a huge run, but his knee had been down, and it was bringing up a third down and about eight, six to eight versus that first down from like the ten to twelve. And I'm looking down at the clock thinking, you know, we might be about to try to take this to at least two and a half minutes, which I would have been fine with had we scored, which we did, but not with a field goal. Because I had no doubt that this was going to come down to a Florida Gator possession to either tie it or win it. So, But, but luckily, I believe that's the, that is the... That is the drive where Johnny Wilson finally did what we've seen him do most of the year. I I will not lie to you. I thought he had a rough game. But he redeemed that rough game with that catch on the left sideline. That was Johnny Wilson doing Johnny Wilson things. And before I go back and talk about some of just the in-game performances, let, let me just finish how it went. Because when they got the ball back, all right, and and I knew they only had one timeout. Now, in college and NFL, it's, it's just amazing how long the last couple minutes of a football game can last, and you're never truly out of it. But when they called the pass interference call, I, I, I just don't know if that should have been called or not should have been called. I, I'm a, obviously from the Florida State Fandom. I I thought it was a horrendous call. I don't think that kind of penalty had been called the entirety of the game, which in that way it should not have been called. the The official closest to it that was right on that sideline, he's not the one that threw the flag. It was the guy from from the back, and then he threw it because of the hand around the back. I would have been really upset if I was Florida State with that call. But as an ex-coach, I would have been really upset if I had been Florida if they had not made that call. So, yeah, I didn't want them to call it, but 
I, I don't know. I, I don't think you make that call in that juncture of the game after the way you've called the game. So I can feel comfortable to say that that if we had lost, I think that's the call we would all be talking about today. If Florida State had ended up losing the game, I think that penalty, we would say that penalty is what did it. And I am one of those people that thought the officials were just absolutely horrendous. And we did benefit late, finally, from a couple calls. But I thought the officials did everything they could to keep Florida in the game. And I, I'm not going to lie, I can – Five, six, seven, eight plays in the first half. I thought Florida's defensive end was lined up offsides every play. And at no point did they even call it. I thought there were times the, the Florida play should have been reviewed, a, a successful play by Florida, whether that means their touchdown that was from the foot line that I do not think was a touchdown or some plays in which Florida State did well. I, I thought they always reviewed it if it meant it could go against Florida State. There were times I didn't even think they slowed down the game to review something that should have gone against Florida. And I, am, I, I will always say I think the SEC gets too much credit. Uh, I do think the SEC is the most successful in their fun-to-watch conference, but I think commentators, I think officials, I, they go into games thinking the SEC is better, and they call the game like that, and it's – unfair to a team like Florida State that is doing everything right to win that game that calls might go against them all right so they get the pass interference call and from that point all of a sudden they're just killing us on the sidelines eight to 12 yards catching it and getting out of bounds catching it and getting out of bounds I did think there was a chance Richardson threw us the ball um on that drive, I thought that I thought we might get us a pick, but when they started doing that, because if you didn't notice, this, we we were playing four across and we were giving them a ton of cushion to not let them behind us because we weren't going to give up the touchdown, which that's great because at that point I do think you need to call the game in the sense of don't give up the touchdown, make make Anthony Richardson make the throws to beat us. And in the end game, he did not make those throws. At that point, he was making those throws, hitting them on the sideline, hitting them on the sideline. But that goes back to the drive before where we, in my opinion, could not settle for a field goal or a field goal attempt. Um, We had to have that touchdown because if we had not had that touchdown, I believe they they were going to go down and and beat us. I just – I had that in my head. And so finally, we get them back into some long down and distance. That I, th- I believe they had another penalty. I did not think Florida. I, I have not made up my mind on Billy Napier. Um, I hope he just stays horrible because I don't want Florida to get good. I think he's got – I look at him and I, I see that – He's a, he is Florida's Mike Norvell. So it could go one of two ways. They're either going to stand by him and allow his process to work, in which case I do, I, I do think he will have some success because he's always going to have talent at Florida. But will Florida be patient with him? That I don't know. But I did think last night they – they were very undisciplined in some spots where they could not afford to be undisciplined. All right, so we get down to those last few plays, and I believe on third down, we, we, we played that four across deep, man, man four across, maybe. It was either that either stopped on second or third down because then what we moved to was a matchup zone. It looked like we were playing too deep over the top to keep anything from getting above us and then matching up with their men underneath, which I thought was the best coverage for us throughout the night um and then on fourth down of course we go away from that and bring jamie off the edge which i thought was a huge i thought that was a good call but what he did different that we had not done especially in the first half is when he came off the edge he he still came at the quarterbacks uh he was coming off our left so he came at the quarterbacks upfield right shoulder which kept him from getting outside. When Anthony Richardson started to break contain, Jamie was in the perfect spot that he could redirect and still be on him. Like, uh, I mean, he was not going to let go. He might not have been able to tackle him because Anthony Richardson is gigantic, but he was not going to just let him break contain 
and run down the sideline. And yes, he got Anthony Richardson's face mask, but I will tell everybody, go back and watch the play. Anthony Richardson had his face mask first. So if we're going to go that direction, first off, I'll say, in my opinion, that's even Steven. Because if you, if you even want to call the pass interference, pass interference, we could go back and find about 15 other calls that went Florida's way. But I still don't think most games. I can promise you in Ohio State, Michigan today, in Alabama, Auburn, they, they, no official is going to make the call for pass interference that our, that our officials made last night. All right, so at the very least, it was an even Steven trade. But if you just want to go back and watch that specific play, you will see Anthony Richardson grab Jamie Robertson's face mask and pull his head down before Jamie ever grabbed Anthony Richardson's. So I ain't feeling sorry for you. All right, and that forced a bad throw, game over, we win, rush the field. I was lucky last year to be down there for the, for the Miami game, and we got to go on the field, but it was not a rush the field. But last night it was great to rush the field. And for any Florida Gator fan that thinks that rushing the field was b- about beating you, uh, rest easy. You are not that important to, to the Florida State Seminoles. That rush in the field was pent up from the last four to five years of just absolute frustration and seeing what Coach Norvell has been selling to us pay off. And you just happen to be the team that we beat at the end of the 2022 regular season to get to nine wins. And so, yeah, we were pumped we beat Florida, and it was fun to watch all the players carry that gator head around. But that that storm in the field – that, that thing was three to four years in the making. All right, so y'all can just rest easy. Everybody's like, can't believe y'all stormed the field. I, I don't know. If everybody's doing it, I don't talk to any, anybody. <laughs> I just assume I would be, if I was y'all, I would be sitting there saying, I can't believe y'all stormed the field when we are a sub-average Florida State team. Uh, I will say that Clemson stormed the field when they beat what I thought was not a very well-played Florida State team. So I'm, we're not going to feel bad about storming the field. All right, and so we win the game. Now we're, we're, we're going to a bowl. Before we talk possible bowls, let's go back and talk about the, the obvious player of the game, Jordan Travis, whom why I, I saw an article the other day that listed top 25 Heisman candidates, and this was prior to our last two or three games, but he still was not even listed in the top 25, which tells me nobody was paying attention. Like, watch the games. Watch Watch the games. And you will have seen a guy, I'm not saying he should have been invited to the Heisman ceremony this year. I do think he's played good enough to do so. I just think you got to start yourself in the conversation for that to get invited. Rarely does someone come out of nowhere and get invited to that. Um, But to not even be in the top 25 tells me people aren't even, weren't even paying attention. Well, luckily we were the only game other than I think it was Wyoming and Fresno State maybe on, on that other channel. We were the only game going last night. And anybody watching that game realizes that Jordan Travis should be a Heisman contender. Will he be this year? No, it is too late. If he comes back, will he be next year? If he's not, then they're not watching the same games we are. Every time we needed him to make an, a Superman play, he made a Superman play. And I don't think he could have done that two years ago. I do think late last year we started to see glimpses of that once our coaching staff, our fan base, and the other players started realizing he is our guy. We do have our best chance to win when he is our quarterback. And then this year, just being fully bought into him, he has absolutely thrived. And I always say this, I always used to tell my quarterback, and I had some really good ones from Lana Lyles to, to Luke Wells to the last one I had, Mike Dameron, who was the best of all of them. You don't have to go make plays above your head. I would always tell them, just go be you. Play within the play call, play within the system, and then when the time comes, you'll know when you have to make the big play. And I thought that's exactly what Jordan Travis has done. He has become an unbelievable manager of Mike Norvell's offense. And then last night, he knew when it was time to make a Superman play. 
and he made Superman plays, and not just one, not just two. Uh, it was the the one of them was number one tonight on or t- this morning on the top ten on ESPN Sports Center, and deservedly so. I st- I still argue that he was robbed of at least one of the touchdowns last night. The first one, maybe his knee was down. He was robbed of the second one, but that's okay. Even though it was a little scary that second time when we had to go all the way to to, to trying to run on that giant 400-pound Florida defensive lineman and ended up having to run it outside, it was, a little, it was a little scary that we might not get it in. We got it in. But Jordan Travis, what a game. And anybody who watched that game who didn't wake up this morning thinking, man, I would like to see more of that kid, they're not thinking with their correct brain power. If he comes back next year, he has to be mentioned in the Heisman Trophy candidacy. All right, so Trey Benson also had another good game. I am a little worried. I'm not going to lie. We're great getting players out of the portal. I worry about who is going to go into the portal. We will have some go into the portal, and they need to go into the portal because they haven't gotten an opportunity to play here at Florida State. Um, Travis J comes to mind. McCall. I McCall is going to go into the portal. And I really don't understand what kind of um, – I'm not going to say anything bad about him, but he has not looked bought into what it would take for him to become a starter at Florida State. He, he appears to be someone that just wanted it to be handed to him. And unfortunately for him, that's not how it was going to go down with some of the players he had in front of him. But what I worry is in the running back room because we all, all year, no matter how well people were running, we rotated those guys. And, yeah, there's something to be said last night when the game was on the line. I agree Trey Benson needed to be the guy. I thought early, I was really, really surprised on our first two to three drives that Trey Benson stayed. You know, he, he went on the first drive, then he came back out, and on the scoring drive, he, he played his tail off. Typically, we bring in Treshawn Ward on that next drive, and I don't believe we did. And if we did, it was only for a play or two. Toafili got very little playing time. I worry about one of those two guys going into the portal. Will we be okay? Yes, we'll be okay, guys. But I just like, I like those guys. I like them. I think they've given a lot to our program. And I understand if they go, it's not going to be with any animosity. But, man, would I like to come back next year and have all those guys. And, and yes, I am a Rodney Hill, C.J. Campbell fan. And maybe we get us a, a new one, the recruit that's committed to Texas. Maybe he comes. I'm not saying anything bad about them. But, man, the three guys that we've had this year have been fun to watch. And they have given us, man, they have given us so much. And so, yeah, I am scared that we lose one of those guys. I, I, I heard someone ask Trey Benson at the end of the game if he's going to the NFL draft, and he said, well, we'll definitely look into it. I think that would be a mistake. I think he'll be – I don't know. I can't tell you right now where Jay Sean Corbin is, but I know Jay Sean Corbin wished he was back at Florida State. And I'm afraid that might happen to Trey, with Trey Benson if he goes. Uh, but I also understand you, you – had a catastrophic injury. No one took a chance on you. You've just, you are lighting the world on fire right now. If he gets the word that he's going to be drafted, he, then he's got to go. Cause you just, you're not promised anything. I do hope Jordan Travis comes back. I think that's the right move for him. I think the NIL days change that for him because he can come back and get paid. I, I don't know. Um, even though he is, light years beyond where any of us thought he would be as a fully threshed out, fleshed out quarterback. I don't know that he makes an NFL roster. And do you want to take that risk and end up not making one and going and playing in Canada or whatever you would do? Or do you want to get paid with the NIL and come back to Florida State for another year? I think he makes the decision to come back, get paid, and – uh, get paid with the NIL and, and play. You know, we do lose uh, some offensive linemen, but not all of them. And, guys, Jazz got better, man. When he first got put in the starting lineup, I thought he was a very weak link. He he played well last night. Going back to one of the comments I made earlier, I felt our offensive line handled Florida's defensive line better than 
our defensive line handled Florida's offensive line. We got better late, but I was pretty impressed with how well we protected Jordan. When they, even when he had to make his Superman plays, guys, they brought they brought simply more than we were going to be able to block on those plays. When when for the for the majority of the game, our offensive line held up and did a really good job. Uh, I know Jordan Travis got to break the rock after the game, and I think Mike Norvell as well. But, man, did JT deserve it. And does he deserve every bit of adulation he's going to get from Florida State fan base today? He does. Um, I'm excited for the future of Florida State football. Now, bowl games, I don't know. I know that I heard there were Orange Bowl representatives there. I heard there were Cheez-It Bowl representatives there, Relia Quest Bowl representatives there. A lot has to play out today. Um, and then again, with the, the with the championship games, I think a lot of it depends on what happens with Clemson. A lot of it depends on what happens with USC. Uh, but I do think there's a chance we go to the Orange Bowl. Um, you know, I don't know how I feel about it. If if they went to the Cheez It Bowl, I don't know that I'm going to be able to go. But that's the only bowl we could go to that I, because of my schedule and everything here could make it too. So I kind of hope we go to the Cheez-It Bowl on December 29th in Orlando. Uh, I I still don't know that I could go, but I know I'm not going to be able to make the the ones on the 30th. Or I think one of them was on January 2nd maybe, and I I won't be able to make that one either. But whether I can make it or not, guys, I'm going to be fully tuned in. Uh, The world stops for me when Florida State takes the field, no matter who they play, no matter how good they are. And luckily for me and luckily for a lot of us, this Florida State team has been an absolute blast to watch. They seem extraordinarily likable. They appear to really enjoy playing with each other, playing for these coaches, and they just represent Florida State University better than so many teams have in recent memory they are hard even if you don't like florida state they they are a hard group of young men to root against norvell is a hard coach to root against because he is man what you what you see from norvell is what you get he loves this program he loves these guys but what i love about norvell is you can tell he loves the work he loves the work that goes into being successful and man is it showing in a nine-win season with a chance to get to 10. Um, I've been saying for the last three weeks that if this was a year that the 12-team playoff was um, was already happening, that Florida State is a threat to get into it. And I finally heard them say it on game day today. I think last night's win would have clinched us as definitely being in the conversation for the 10th, 11th, or 12th spot for the 12-team college football playoff, which to me that is why we need the 12-team college football playoff because there will still be reason for these teams to keep playing hard this late in the season. Right now, with four, with four, with, with only four teams, so many teams have been out of it for so long. With 12 teams, it becomes much more like college basketball, NCAA tournament. Man, you still got a shot late in the year. I am also excited that the ACC is doing away with divisions. So the two best teams will theoretically get to play each other in the ACC championship versus the two winners of each of the divisions. So there is so much good things coming down the road for the Florida State Seminoles. And not to mention conference realignment, we are foolish if we don't think we're going to start being mentioned in the talk as soon as the talk kicks back up again. I think SEC and I think Big Ten will both be talked about. With Florida State, will anything happen? Obviously, there are so many dominoes that would have to fall and so much that has to be done even within the ACC for that to happen. But will it be in, in discuss, yes. And did this season help Florida State's stock go up in those discussions? You better believe it did. So prepare for us to be mentioned again with SEC. Prepare for us to be mentioned again with Big Ten. But even if we have to stay in the ACC for the next few years, we are set up for better success than what we have been in the way that the structure of college football is about to change. All right, I'm wrapping this up. It is 10.57. I'm going to go watch some some college football and hopefully have a a great day of games knowing that 
Florida State defeated the Gators all day. I don't have to wait until the Saturday slot we normally play in to see how we're going to do. I can watch football all day knowing that the Florida State Seminoles are the state champions of the state of Florida and are headed to a not just a bowl for the first time in a long time, but are headed to a good bowl for the first time in a long time, and I can't wait to watch them. Go Nose! Have a great Saturday. Thank you.